Welcome to the Creative Plan Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews of items, and convention panels, and other exciting things that we run into from time to time. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Hey guys, Jim here with Creative Flame Podcast Network with Kelly. Hello! Who brings comfort to me. Aww. Because for hashtag RPG a day 2020, while she's ooing and eyeing, the word for the day is comfort. Comfort. This one was a tricky. This is a tricky one. Um, I suppose uh, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, every player has their, you know, the things that they find comfortable about gaming. Um, you know, they have that one set of dice or those, those dice or that they have the specific, like if they game at the one place where like the, the chair that they like to sit in, um, or like for me, uh, when we play at a game store, mm-hmm. I like, I'm, I'm more comfortable if we have the enclosed room rather than out in the big floor because it's more comfortable when it, it's contained because uh, there's less sound interference. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you don't have all the, you know, uh, distractions. A- yeah, the ambient noise to uh, um, get in the way. I, I pref- I'm more comfortable in that type of setting. So I mean, and of course we all like to have our snacks or our drink, whatever you know, drinks and stuff. You mean your comfort food? Yeah. When gaming, gaming is always cheat night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's like, okay, yay, I can have M&Ms or something, or something more quiet. <laughs> so it's nice to have something, you know, just, just to mark the occasion as a, as a fun and special occasion. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, but uh, that's what I thought of when comfort, you know. Uh, I suppose characters also often think of comfort. I mean, how many of us prefer to have that, uh, the tiny hut spell? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how often would a player shill out coins for a night at the inn when you could just be camping on the roadside? Exactly, because you know very well that it would be more comfortable in that inn. Or it's it's far nicer to be in that hut because everybody can sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's got, it's an, it's an, it's a magic protection, you know. So, I mean, that spell wouldn't exist if, you know, we don't take character comfort into consideration as well. Ah, that's a good point. See, see, I'd also like to say comfort is good for in regards to make sure you have comfort at the game table, like you were saying, so you can feel comfortable actually role playing with your your fellow you know, mm-hmm. RPGers. Because if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't have comfort in yourself and, and in the environment, you probably won't come out and role play. True. Um, like they're creating a safe space for the players to camp. You want to create a safe space a comfortable place for your gamers so that they they can relax and uh, enjoy themselves that's that's an excellent uh use of the word comfort um because speaking as a woman gamer not all ta- you know gamer tables are as comfortable as others mm-hmm. trust me on that um either we're not made comfortable uh by you know we're decidedly uncomfortable um, or, you know, that they just don't know how to make. So 
trying to make it a comfortable gaming space for everybody um, is very important. Yeah, and that's one of the things as the GM, it's it's really your job to make sure, I mean, you, you it's not on your shoulders, but it is your job to make sure everyone feels comfortable at the gaming table. Mm-hmm. Whether that's it's true. Whether it's, you know, pushing down any little sidebars, any comments, using an X card on the table if anybody needs an X card to feel comfortable, because there are mm-hmm. a lot of gamers out there that as soon as you start talking about how disgustingly oozy the mad scientist laboratory is with the cadavers on the table. Immediately they're like X card. I don't want to hear about any medical stuff. Yeah. And, or, you know, start talking about something super claustrophobic and all of a sudden oh, someone's going yeah. right for the X card. I, well, I, it'll g- definitely give me the heebie-jeebies. Um, and then there's also other subjects that are, you know, even far more distasteful that, you know, um, I'm like, I don't know how many, you know, pugs I've been in and they'll use the term rape like, yo, we're going to like, you know, um, no, not comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. You know, that is that is definitely an X card when you could totally Big, say right roughshod right over them or uh, yeah, uh, there's there's. Yeah, yeah. no. Uh, so that that is decidedly a very uncomfortable uh, environment mm-hmm. uh, for, you know, for oh, should be for everybody. So, yeah, no, definitely. I definitely. mean, that's that's definitely why comfort like at uh, Rincon sadly won't be happening this year most likely, but they, they take into effect the, hey, here, are any of these terms not cool with you? And you can check them off so your GM mm-hmm. knows not to either let it happen or, at the table or get it in his game because sometimes you have to edit that stuff last minute. Mm-hmm. That that does happen on occasion. That last minute for your player's comfort, you know, somebody's having a bad day, and you're like, "Whoa, we we were gonna have this dramatic scene framed around me pushing you against the wall, interrogation style, but you're having a bad day. So in regards to comfort, I'm gonna knock that scene out completely and just we'll mm-hmm. we'll, we'll go back there later when you're in good headspace." But yeah, but you're right that like Ringcon does pay attention to that where the players have uh an active voice mm-hmm. um as to what should not happen uh for that. Also, they do provide a female a ladies gaming space mm-hmm. um uh which is nice um uh just for the, you know, sometimes you just need a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a huge advocate for the ladies gaming space. I thought that was an awesome idea when Karen and, you know, company mentioned it the first time. It's like, that needs to be a thing. Because again, being in a room with a lot of folks, you know, that are the same sex as you is a lot more comfortable than being on the floor when you're the only gal amongst this group that have never played with a girl that are, they could be uncomfortable themselves. So they push their uncomfort on you. Oh, yes, yes, I do. Because <laughs> that's, that, that's, that is a thing, you know. Because or they won't leave you alone, uh, like, they're, like, uh, you know. Leering. <laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, I find that that's really becoming less of a thing. I mean, especially um, with, you know, younger gamers and stuff it's not as much of an issue it's still um it all depends on their gaming experiences Mm -hmm. so it's becoming much more commonplace so i think that um it's good that we have something like that right now i hope that in the future will not won't be necessary you know, but it's nice to have that space. Well, think about it. Just like in Stranger Things, the group plays with a gal in the group and they stop being so creepy about it. And everyone gets to their comfort level, you know, so that way everyone can enjoy the game and have a good time. Yeah, but people have to be willing to uh, make those adjustments because I hate to say it far off, far too often, 
women, especially, you know, the way it used to be, was we were always supposed to, we were always taught to be the peacemaker, that we had to be the one to compromise. Well, gentlemen, I'm sorry. A lot of us are done compromising. We're not going to just smile and go, you know, it's boys being boys. No, a lot of us are going to say, stop that shit. (laughs) So you're saying you no longer are comfortable with compromise. Well, not to suggest that we're just no longer, a lot of us are no longer comfortable with just letting it slide. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it is not a bad thing to hold somebody on account. If somebody does something, it's okay to call them out on it. Yeah. I mean, how else can people find out their assholes if they don't know they're being assholes? <laughs> But they I mean that's you know that's not like all you know I I I also see that it is changing and as long as we continue to change in a forward motion, mm-hmm. <laughs> that that's fantastic. And also, I take comfort in the fact that there's more family gaming groups out there. Which oh yeah, that I think that's a huge part of the transition is. It's not just a bunch of, you know, high schoolers and elementary folks sneaking away to play a game because, you know, they might be blamed for being a Satanist by playing D&D, you know, <laughs> you know, the big Satan scare. That 60 minutes uh, expose <laughs> that they like, what, did in the 80s? <laughs> oh, my God. Because uh, they weren't comfortable with us gaming. <laughs> mm-hmm. So all of a sudden they ho- heard about kids playing wizards and casting spells against dragons and demons. And that's kind of why D&D lost demons and devils for a while. Because society's comfort level at seeing this game, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Dragons are wholesome. They're in the Bible. Demons, they're in the Bible too, but we don't want to talk about them. Yeah. That, that's not in the comfort zone. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a good point, though. Mm-hmm. Which also comfort can be popped out as during session zero, ask your players what they don't want in the game. Mm. You know, it because remember how you know when we usually do our session zero. So what do you absolute not want in the game? And you always scream gelatinous cube. Yeah, I hate those. Or bless monsters. Oh, oh, oh! Don't. See, ugh. I just broke your comfort God. level. God, see, and I remember from when I was a kid, the seeing that. I mean, it was just this black and white drawing, and it's not even that, you know, I mean, it was mm-hmm. a very, you know, very simple. But the horror on the guy's face. Guy wearing a, a helmet and chain mail, the, and the worms that, the, doing their thing. The worms and going into the arm, just that, just, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it gave me the heebie jeebies. And it oh, still does. terrible. I know. It's just, <laughs> and, you know, it, it's not like it's the most detailed or graphic illustration but i was you know yeah i mean i was on a young one i'm like oh my god this is terrible the mere thought of it just creeped me out oh oh to this oh okay let's change the subject because <laughs> that is totally oh, out of oh. your comfort zone oh yeah Okay, so I think we've covered comfort, how you can help support comfort, how you can totally ruin someone's comfort, because sometimes in a game it's good to make people squirm. Sometimes. (laughs) So that pretty much will cover for us for uh, August the 17th, the word of comfort. So i got to throw it out. There's a question for folks to comment on, like the Facey books when we make the post. What do you do at your table to help bring comfort to your fellow gamers? Because, you know, I always dig it when they bring drinks. I'm just saying. <laughs> All righty, guys. Talk to you later. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.